I'm Margot Jefferson. I was born in Chicago. I now live in New York. And I'm in Iowa City to give a reading and to give a seminar at the uh, nonfiction Iowa Writers Program. Well, I'm a critic, an arts and culture critic. So, you know, they will ask me, you know, how, you know, how do you express really mixed, complicated feelings about, about a piece of work or um, ask, you know, about some strange cultural phenomenon? How do you formulate opinions without being boringly didactic or getting stale? Yeah, how do you try to stay fresh? No, my quiet place is change, <laughs> change. I often work at home, but I have lately developed the habit of liking to sit in cafes in New York and just look out, you know, at whatever green we have, you know, and um, feel that I'm working, thinking, daydreaming, because part of writing is daydreaming, preparation, with um, people who aren't in my way, but with other consciousnesses around me. I like it. I worked at newspapers and news magazines for some years, and, you know, when I've never had to work in a big newsroom. I generally share in an office with someone else, but you know, when they're on the phone and someone outside across the hall is shouting, and, you know, and you're trying you know, to focus on language, syntax, thought, that's hard. There is not a single influence, but I would say that uh, the ways that, that, ex that creative nonfiction is going, um, writers who are walking the line between poetry, let's say, and what we think of as reportage, um, who are blending criticism with personal mem memoir that shows that you're vulnerable, whereas we usually think of critics as nothing but authoritative. Um, you know, people who are doing collage history rather than straight historical narrative. Those kinds of experiments are really interesting to me. Yeah, several ways. Um, music, always. Uh, I, I have a very good sense of what it is I need <laughs> no, to listen to, either in my house or outside, to just recharge the senses is really. Um, for me, it, what happens is, you know, the brain goes overload and then I start overthinking. So it's, it's needing to recharge my, my sensory pleasure. So music will do it. Um, any, you know, any, any kind of dance will do it. I'm a big dance fan. Um, hanging out with friends and just laughing. But music's always my first resource. Mm. All right, as a general principle, I am always looking to cut parenthetical phrases that I tend to add, but qualifiers that I think of as weak, like um, it, uh, it's, it would seem, you know, or um, um, even probably, um, things, yeah, things that, yeah, things that make you give you just a little too much propriety. I'm always looking to cut. Yes, I would say more, um, more personal reflection, um, more vulnerability, more free association. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You're always, at some point, you always come up against forces that you don't really understand. Uh, you always find yourself in touch with 
feelings, sensations, thoughts that are a little beyond your, your, your control, your rational control. Um, and, you know, the sheer business of it, of it going well, of, of words and phrases coming to you is kind of miraculous. You know, and that in itself is, has a spiritual dimension. Uh, an obsession with words. Not just what they mean, but the texture of them, you know, the way they can feel like objects, really. Um, texture, sound, uh, color, tone, yeah. Yeah, and that doesn't mean that writing isn't um, horrible sometimes, you know, um, and just agonizing and, and boring and frustrating, but um, finally, you know, that need to use words. Um, and the willingness also uh, to go back and cut and tear it apart and say, I used those horribly, you know, or I need to find a new way. Just you know, that, what I'll call banally the editing impulse. <laughs> you know, it also makes a writer. <laughs>